I'm reading the four kinds of happiness from the numerical discourses of the Buddha. Then the householder, Anattapindika, approached the Blessed One, and the Blessed One said to him, There are, householder, these four kinds of happiness which may be achieved by a lay person who enjoys sensual pleasures, depending on time and occasion. What for? The happiness of possession the happiness of enjoyment, the happiness of debtlessness, and the happiness of blamelessness. And what householder is a happiness of possession? Here, a family person possesses wealth acquired by energetic striving, amassed by the strength of his or her arms, earned by the sweat of his or her brow, righteous wealth, righteously gained. When she thinks, I possess wealth acquired by energetic striving, amassed by the strength of my arms, earned by the sweat of my brow, righteous wealth righteously gained. She experiences happiness and joy. This is called the happiness of possession. And what householder is a happiness of enjoyment? Here with the wealth acquired by energetic striving, amassed by the strength of his arms, earned by the sweat of his brow, righteous wealth righteously gained. A family man enjoys his wealth and does meritorious deeds. When he thinks, with the wealth acquired by energetic striving, amassed by the strength of my arms, earned by the sweat of my brow, righteous wealth righteously gained, I enjoy my wealth and do meritorious deeds. 
he experiences happiness and joy. This is called the happiness of enjoyment. And what householder is a happiness of debtlessness? Here, a family person is not indebted to anyone to any degree, whether small or great. When he thinks, I am not indebted to anyone to any degree, whether small or great, he experiences happiness and joy. This is called the happiness of debtlessness. And what householder is a happiness of blamelessness? Here, householder, a noble disciple, is endowed with blameless conduct of deed, word, and thought. When he thinks, I am endowed with blameless conduct of deed, word, and thought, he experiences happiness and joy. This is called the happiness of blamelessness. These householder are the four kinds of happiness that a lay person who enjoys sensual pleasures may achieve depending on time and occasion. Having known the bliss of debtlessness and further the bliss of possession, enjoying the bliss of enjoyment, a mortal then sees with wisdom, while seeing with wisdom, the wise one knows both shares of his happiness. The other is not worth a sixteenth part of the bliss that comes from blamelessness. This is the Discourse of the Five Contemplations for Everyone from the Numerical Discourses of the Buddha. There are five facts, O monks, which ought to be often contemplated upon by everyone, whether man or woman, householder or one gone forth as a monk. What five? I am sure to become old. I cannot avoid aging. I am sure to become ill. I cannot avoid illness. I am sure to die. I cannot avoid death. I must be separated and parted from all that is dear and beloved to me. I am the owner of my actions, heir of my actions. Actions are the womb from which I have sprung. Actions are my relations. Actions are my protection. Whatever actions I do, good or bad, of these I shall become the heir. Now for what good reason should a man or woman, a householder or a monk, often contemplate the fact that they are sure to become old and cannot avoid aging? Beings, while young, take pride in youth, and infatuated by that pride in youth, they lead an evil life in deeds, words, and thoughts. But in one who often contemplates the certainty of old age, the pride of youth will either vanish entirely or will be weakened. For that good reason, the fact of aging should often be contemplated. For what good reason should a man or woman, a householder or monk, often contemplate the fact that they are sure to become ill and cannot avoid illness? Beings, while healthy, take pride in their health, and infatuated by that pride in health, they often lead an evil life in deeds, words, and thoughts. But in one who often contemplates the certainty of illness, the pride in health will either vanish entirely or will be weakened. For that good reason, the fact of illness should often be contemplated. For what good reason should a man or woman, a householder or a monk, often contemplate the fact that they are sure to die and cannot avoid death. Beings, while alive, take pride in life, and infatuated by that pride in life, they lead an evil life in deeds, words, and thoughts. But in one who often contemplates the certainty of death, the pride in life will either vanish entirely or will be weakened. For that good reason, the fact of death should often be contemplated. For what good reason should a man or woman, a householder or a monk, often contemplate the fact that they must be separated and parted from all that is dear and beloved to them? Beings have lustful desire for what is dear and beloved, and inflamed by lust, they lead an evil life in deeds, words, and thoughts. But in one who often contemplates 
separation from things dear and beloved, lustful desire for what is dear and beloved will either vanish entirely or will be weakened. For that good reason, separation from what is beloved should often be contemplated. For what good reason should a man or woman, a householder or monk, often contemplate the fact that they are owners of their actions and that whatever actions they do, good or bad, of these they will become the heirs? There are beings who lead an evil life in deeds, words, and thoughts. But in one who often contemplates one's responsibility for one's actions, such evil conduct will either vanish entirely or will be weakened. For that good reason, the fact of responsibility for one's actions should often be contemplated. Now, O monks, the noble disciple contemplates thus, I am not the only one who is sure to become old, to fall ill and to die. But wherever beings come and go, pass away and re-arise, they all are subject to old age, illness and death. In one who often contemplates these facts, the path arises. He now regularly pursues, develops and cultivates that path. And while he is doing so, the fetters are abandoned and the underlying tendencies eliminated. Further, the noble disciple contemplates thus, I am not the only one who must be separated and parted from what is dear and beloved. I am not the only one who is the owner and heir of his actions. But wherever beings come and go, pass away and re-arise, all must be separated and parted from what is dear and beloved, and all are owners and heirs of their actions. In one who often contemplates these facts, the path arises. She now regularly pursues, develops, and cultivates that path. And while she is doing so, the fetters are abandoned and the underlying tendencies eliminated. Worldlings are disgusted by other beings who share in our common nature, by those afflicted with aging and illness, by those on the verge of death. When I live for a higher aim, it is unfitting for me to loathe such pitiful beings. While dwelling thus, I will defeat that pride in health, youth, and life. Having known the state free from props, seeing security in renunciation. As I gazed towards Nibbana, zeal arose in me. Now I can never pursue sensual pleasures. Never again shall I turn back. The holy life is now my highest goal.